The gaming space of the day is a colossal piece of shit, and that's no secret. But the real problem is that it looks like what the future has in store for us is just a whole bunch more hot garbage. And all of that hot garbage is being shoveled over all of the things that made the gaming industry special to begin with. There's always gonna be change. There's always gonna be the next new thing. And because there's always gonna be the next new thing, there's always going to exist nostalgia. Those who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. But what if there's nothing to look back at? Well, the terrifying thing is, it looks like this is the direction that the AAA gaming market is heading. The big boys of the gaming space, like these guys, are the ones that are prioritizing things like life service games and shoveling shit out in a less than stellar state. Meanwhile, there are a bunch of digital gems that are getting glazed over and delisted, and we're losing them forever. It looks grim. Why? 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 Well, to fully understand, my dear shareholders, we need to go and take a trip to the library. No, not the adult section. We need the kitty section. Yeah! Take a seat, boys and girls, as I read to you the story of the very hungry caterpillar. Might be a bit different from how you remember it. The very hungry caterpillar was very hungry indeed. So he leapt from his leaf and he started to feed. And all that he ate would never satiate. So he ate even bigger and bigger. But wait, I cannot move, said the caterpillar. I've eaten so much I feel like a balloon. You greedy caterpillar, you've eaten too much. A bird sat aside him looking for lunch. My laptop screen has gone off. And now you are helpless and stuck to the floor. I'll eat you for lunch till so your, your life, life is no more. more. The end. Let's face it, the whole industry was founded on creativity and finding exciting ways to procrastinate. Here's a yellow thing, run around a maze, don't get it caught by jelly. The end. Here's a donkey, it's gonna throw barrels, save the princess. The end. Here's the blocks. Make them not there. The end. <laughs> but as the industry has grown, companies have become motivated by one solemn thing. Money. Let's begin something that wasn't really a problem back in the days of, say, the PS2. What you playing, boy? You got there one of those PlayStation 2s there? Oh, shit, fire. I don't think I got to see one of those since Armadillo. I have a friend that's a Cajun, so that's not racist. <laughs> Back when video game online capability was either super limited or non-existent, games had to be in a perfect or reasonably perfect shipping state and a complete experience before they could even leave the door. But now you load up practically any game. What the? Push notifications for battle passes, cosmetic loot boxes, microtransactions. Go away! It's like paying to go and see a football game and you sit down in your seat and some cunt gets in your face and starts yelling shit I like, pay me an extra 40 quid, I'll make it so you can buy me another 20 quid, I'll give you this fucking Not only is this super fucking annoying, but it also ruins the integrity of so many games that it's included in. And all of this is just for a few quid to go in the publisher's pockets and the shareholder's pockets. Nine times out of ten, the developers don't even want to put this shit in the game. Look at Rainbow Six Siege. Tactical first person shooter. Well, it's Rick and Morty time. Call of Duty Vanguard is a World War II shooter. This is World War II. Wow, that is fucking horrifying. And by comparison, another Call of Duty game is Call of Duty World at War. Whoa. Attack on Titan, bear costumes, gorillas. Gorillas, Godzilla, gorillas, LED masks, wolf head. Am I out of touch? Am I an old man yelling at a cloud here? Or is this what people want? Because the worst part is, and I'm guilty of doing it too, is if you fork money out for this shit for games like FIFA, EA Club, NFL, NBA, other letters, Call of Duty, any game that is an annual release, you only get it for that one year! Thanks for your 20 quid, fuckhead. Fair enough, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and what then became Modern Warfare 3 were in the same package and that's a whole kettle of fish I am not gonna get into right right now. Your Modern Warfare 2 cosmetics would carry over a Modern Warfare 3. That was kind of nice. But despite running on the same engine, games like Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare... Modern Warfare Vanguard? <laughs> Might as well fucking be. Call of Duty Vanguard 
guess what? Tough shit, you don't get the stuff that you paid for. Ooh, what's this in here? Wow, it's my clown costume. It fits perfectly because I give this company money for a game that I can't play anymore. Replayability. I love my Xbox 360 library. I love my PlayStation 2 library. I love my PlayStation 1 library of one game that is the best game that released on that system. Don't at me. I can jump into pretty much any one of these and re-experience its story, its multiplayer. If I had the DLC, I can play the DLC because I bought it and I own it and it's physically there and it's fantastic and oh my god. Oh. If I want to play the multiplayer, I can just jump in with bots because that's something that was put in by the developers so that I can still remind myself how fucking shit I am at gaming with a controller. But live service? Let me just jump back into Modern Warfare 2019 Warzone real quick. Oh wait, no I can't because the servers have been shut down and they don't exist anymore and even if they did... Does this mean I win? I'm shedding. This isn't to say that live service models don't have a place and that they don't work. Helldivers 2 is a prime example of a dev team that are using a live service model but prioritizing the game before anything else. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't enjoy live service games. I play the shit out of so many of them, but I know that I am not alone in that when I'm old and gray, er, I want to be able to sit in my old man gamer chair Throw on some fucking Siege or Slayer or Mirage and enjoy it like it was. So is the gaming industry doomed? No. It's not all doom and gloom. Despite the garbage trucks full of shit that we are being given, there is still a natural beacon of light. The indie developers that give us some of the best games that the gaming market could ever offer. Wow. These are the guys that you should be giving your money to. Not the shareholders that are asking for, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Wow. Wow. We got this now. Do you want this? The silver lining is where AAA fails, indie will thrive. And atop the mountain of garbage will rise these phenomenal things. Not these guys. I don't know, I just wanted to jump on a soapbox and rant about the state of where we're at currently in the gaming industry because it feels like no matter where you turn, there's always another battle pass or another. The list goes on and on and on and on. But if you share these frustrations, why don't you share this video with your dad? And if you want to see this channel continue to grow the way that it has so fantastically this past kind of couple of months, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share this with your friends, or enjoy a plethora of other weird creative content that I've got on my channel, such as these things. <laughs> I really do hope that you are having a fantastic day. And don't forget to purchase the Stag Battle Pass, now available for, um, for a low price, very low price. I need your money. Give me your money.